Hi, everyone. I'm actually here with the voice of Formula One. I would say you're the voice of Formula One. Yeah, shut your eyes. <laughs> don't, don't look, just listen. Just have your ears. Ears <laughs> pricked up listening. Exactly. <laughs> How does it make you feel knowing that when people think of F1, they hear your voice? Um, no, I, it's weird when people say I'm the voice of F1. Mm. It's not how I see myself at all. But if other people see me that way, that's lovely. Yeah. It really is. And if people associate me with the sport, it means I, I'm not at a bad run of this yes. so far. I must, yeah. I must You're doing okay. something right. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm making a bit of a difference and an impact there. And that's uh, for a boy from Stevenage mm -hmm. um, in Hertfordshire, where Lewis Hamilton uh, was born as well, who never, ever thought he'd be traveling yeah. the world and, and doing doing a, a, a job as, as idiotic as this, you know, yep. talking to, to millions and billions of people <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon, yeah. having a conversation where you can't see who you're talking to. Yep. And and talking about a sport that they actually love, I, I never thought. I wouldn't think it would happen. Spot. So I was, I was reading about you started your career at a hospital radio, yeah, I believe. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know it was a career at the time. Yeah. So it was just a bit of fun. Like, well, there's just something to do. <laughs> it's right. Well, things, so when I was young, uh, many, many years ago, you know, when the world was in black and white and, mm -hmm. you know, I was walking around in shorts like I was. I, you are. Um, and flip-flops. And, and flip-flops. Yeah, <laughs> flip I've got flops. my thongs on today. I thought if I oh, did you call them thongs? Yeah, well, it's just an Aussie interview. So yeah, not true. I'm, I'm, thongs. I was trying to read. You were, accommodating. Yeah, you, were, you were trying to reach out to me. I'm reaching out to you. Perfect. You know? The way it's good. <laughs> so when I was a kid, um, I used to used to love listening to sports commentators and, and, and yeah. I made my mind up that's what I wanted to be because mm -hmm. these people seem to seem to be having the best time. Yeah, can confirm that's what I think as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you try telling your teachers that that's what you want to do yeah. for a living and they go, right, okay, yeah, how are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely no idea, but I'll find a way. And I thought one thing I needed to do was to, to have practice where in, behind a microphone. Yep. Yeah. Do something fun. I love music as well. So uh, I met a guy who was into hospital radio. And so how'd you get into that? Mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. And I got my own show on a, on a local hospital. And that gave me a lot of practice yeah. for a couple of years. Um, oh, that was awful. So awful. But we it, all start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. We <laughs> start somewhere. But that kind of led to other things. And, and a friend of mine, he was a journalist, got a job as uh, the sports editor of the local newspaper. This was my first big break when you yep. said, look, will you come and report on the local football team? Can't pay you any money, but I'll give you a buy mm. And that was round about 1993. Yeah, I was uh, born. Was it? Oh, <laughs> happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the whole year. <laughs> the whole year. We'll celebrate 93. Um, this now makes me feel very old. So, um, so, Apologies. <laughs> that's all right, that was, but that was my big break. And, and that yeah. got me into, into journalism. I was working in the theatre as a publicity officer inside. Uh, but it got me into journalism and I met people and I met people and I found a way to say yes yep. to every single crazy job opportunity that came my way. And eventually I got a full-time job with the BBC. Yeah. In a local radio station where I've been doing a whole load of work. And they said, and this is the career advice bit, they said, <laughs> We want you to do this, 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 and that. I said, look, no, 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 I've got, I've got a job Monday to Friday. Yeah. I've got a job on Saturdays. I can't work four hours a day before I start my normal job. Yeah. It's just going to kill me. Do you want me? Give me a full-time job. And they said, uh, yes, you've got a month. She said, oh. I said, I want a full-time job. You've got a full-time job for a month. We'll give you a one-month contract. Yeah, see how you get on. Yeah. I went, well, what if I don't work out? It's more you you're doing another job then. Yeah. You've got to find something else. So if I do work out, yeah, we will probably keep you on. And it took me like two milliseconds to say yes. I didn't even think. No, we did, but you... Word this, moment. But this was it. <laughs> I didn't go to university. I didn't go to college. Didn't study to be a journalist or a broadcaster. I worked yeah. my way up. And someone was now giving me the chance and the opportunity to say, I jumped at it. Yeah. And the rest, as they say, has been ever more rungs up the ladder, etc. Yeah. To the time I um, I went to Vegas with a few friends and uh, a mate of mine who produced F1 for BBC Radio mm -hmm. said, you should be an F1 commentator. Oh, wow. And I said, shut up, you're drunk. Which is what? Like, I'm not yeah. listening to you. Shush. <laughs> Have some water. <laughs> it was 2 a.m. We were in a bar. He went, yeah. no, no, I'm being serious. And he was serious the next morning as well. Um, and so I auditioned um, for it, got the yep. job. And uh, the rest, as they say, is proper history. Yeah, wow. What a story. <laughs>
It's. I mean, that I've glossed over it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you could talk about it for hours. I could talk about anything for hours. Yeah. For sure, that's true. Oh, it's, oh the requisite. And so, no, it, it, there were a lot of sacrifices that that were made along the way. Where you know, my mates would be going out on Friday night. I'd be in a radio studio yep. editing. Yeah. Not not getting even paid for it. Just learning my craft. You know, getting up first thing in the morning to to travel hundreds of miles to report on a football yeah. game, and that and, and that was my Saturday. Um, but it was worth it because it was what I wanted to do. It was, yeah. it was my passion. We loved it. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah. and we've ended up here in you know, Singapore yeah. for, I'm trying to think, my 365th Grand Prix as a commentator. Wow. That's a lot. It is, isn't it? It's basically a full year. That's my life. Full year. Yeah. Every day. Full it's year. Really yeah. Like that. That's one as one commentary for every single day of yeah. the year. That's a lot of comments. That's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. <laughs> That's a lot of talking. Yeah, but this we've just done one question and we've been talking. I know. About I've got. Minutes. I've got so many. Well, actually, you answered one of the questions. It was going to be what are your, the sacrifices you made. So yeah, but but you don't feel the sacrifices. Yeah. I mean, they are. Yeah. You sacrifice you know, relationships or friends and and, yeah. and and time with with your loved ones, but you're doing it because you have to. Yeah. You have to. You have to go out. I I think in life and proves how much you want something. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're willing to make those sacrifices and put yourself on the line and show people that you're you're learning and, and you're developing and your your appetite for learning and developing mm. is absolutely to the max, yeah. then then that's how you should go about any career in life. Because at the end of the day, we're getting a job that a lot of people want. Mm-hmm. People are entrusting you to do the right thing, and you've got to show willing to do that. Yeah, you know. I don't know if you can teach that or not, but that's something I've always. I don't think you can. Uh, well, look to so, an extent. I think you can. Look. Yeah, yeah. When did you decide you wanted to be an influencer? When did you decide you wanted to create content? Yeah. And and how much effort have you put into the you know the chance to come and be in Singapore and do yeah. crazy things for mm-hmm. for a few days? It's yeah. been years. People think it's years really in the making. Yeah, yeah. It's years in the making. And we'll do this interview. You'll go away and you'll spend hours to, trying to edit it down into some exactly. sort of relevant Yeah. Saying, no, I've got things to do in my life. Mm. But hey, you, you, your craft, you have learned over the years by putting in a huge amount of effort. Yeah. And that's you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I actually used to be a high jumper back in the day. Yeah. Wow. I was a professional high jumper. Uh huh. So. And how good were you? I represented Australia a couple of times. Nice. Yeah. But I got really sick a few years later and then ended up having to stop. But it's a story for another time. Your jumping's really <laughs> hard though, isn't it? It's really fun. I mean, it it's is very fun. fun. Yeah, it's very hard. It's Whenever I jumped, it just made no sense to me. I was like, how am I able to run at this bar that is sitting higher than my head yeah. and just propel myself over it like it was, you're just floating. Yeah, you're just true. float over the bar. It looks so effortless, but there is so much going into the jump. It's the technique, isn't it? Yeah, it's all in the technique, all in the run. Is is one of the most satisfying things though, when you're floating back down. Yeah. You know you just cleared, I don't know what your personal best was, like one eighty. One eighty seven. That's close, wasn't it? Yeah, very close. Um so <laughs> one eighty seven. Uh so kids, that's about, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> See, I, I work in feet and inches, not meters. But I, um, when you've done a one eighty seven and you're floating back down onto the mat, mm-hmm. and okay, that takes a, an absolute fraction of a yeah. second. But you're just gliding back down or floating back yeah. down. Thinking, yeah. Yeah. Most satisfying oh, feeling ever. The best. Yeah. It was the best. It was. It's always fun as well when you'd slightly hit the bar and it would just move an inch and it would stay on. <laughs> and you'd sort of land and just stare at the bar like, stay. You're trying to tell it to yeah. stay on. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> fall off. <laughs> Please don't fall off. It was the best. Was, yeah. I was rubbish at my jumping. It's really? Like, I'm oh. so envious that you could do that. <laughs> no, I am. I, <laughs> I'd like, look at my bears, <laughs> everybody. I was. Uh, I was so shot put. Shot yeah. put. <laughs> Go and do shot put crops. Not not hurdles. Not hurdles. Not uh, hurdles. Don't uh, shot put javelin. Javelin, yep. yeah. But that's posh darts. I'd rather play normal darts, to be fair. It is, it is too. Darts is huge. No, darts is great. Oh my god, it's massive. Well, darts was my big break. Uh oh. broadcasting. What's was it? Yeah, that was um when I worked for the BBC and radio. Yeah. They um covered the darts oh, championships oh <laughs> for uh, for a couple of years. And um one of our editors and TV came to see me in the office and said, uh, can you recommend anyone that could do uh, commentary mm-hmm. for the Darts World Championships? I go, yeah, I could recommend several people, mm-hmm. but I'll put myself at the top of the yeah. list. Oh, why is that? I said, well, I know the sport. I know the players. 
you know, I love the sport. Mm. Um, I love being down there, you know, and prepared to work for peanuts. Yeah. Sort of <laughs> and um, I think I think it was a kind of trick question. He wanted me to actually put myself forward. Yeah. And then I got the job uh, as a second commentator at the Darts World Wow. Champions. What year was that? Uh, that was 2002. Man. At the Lake Sun. the same year you started F1 commentary? That was 2006. 2006, yeah. So I did it with Darts for four years beforehand. Yeah. And I remember... I remember getting there on the uh, Sunday night. I was doing a football game first. Got there on the Sunday nights, and I bumped into a guy called Andy the Viking Fordham, mm -hmm. larger than life uh, character. God rest his soul. Loved Andrus. Uh, we became really good friends. And him and his friend, Andy had gone out the yeah. first round. Him and his friend, Steve O, told me, oh, I've got to watch this guy, Tony David. He's from Australia, from Townsville, Australia. Total unknown. No one knows anything about him. But he's yeah. throwing some really good darts. And so I watched his first round match and he won it. And still nobody fancied him for the title. So I had a bet. Yeah. Like 40, oh, you bet. 40 on. to one. Oh, wow. 40 to one. Wow. Okay. I had a bet on Tony David. And he went and won the, the tournament. What is the one? Amazing. He was a he was thinking, yeah. uh, from Townsville. And, you know, was was playing through the, you know, the pain barrier quite yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, it was quite a stressful week uh, for the players. And I went and won it. And um, all I remember is coming home from, from the, the darts championship for the radio, thinking, well, I love this darts. Yeah. You know, I got this paid fun. and I made money. And I, this guy won at 40 to 1. It was sensational. Well, I'm going to do this more often. Yes. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> very, very satisfying. Yeah. Um, I should probably go back to F1. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm talking about darts. Kay's going to be like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Talk about everything. <laughs> what has been your most memorable race throughout well, your entire your, your full year's worth of races? Full year's <laughs> worth of races. No, there, there, there have been several that I've been lucky enough to witness and and play a part in the race and the, the storyline. But Abu Dhabi 2021. Yeah. You know, that for, was for various insane. reasons. Um, was look, if we ever if we ever get a situation like that again, I you know. I hope we do. I'll be surprised. Oh, really? Deeply satisfied that, you know, I'm, I'm in that position once more, whereby it's gone down to the final race. Yeah. It has now gone down to the last lap. There's controversy, but there's also excellence. Mm. And Max is in a position where, yeah, okay, the rules haven't been followed. Yeah. And he is in with a chance that six laps ago, we really didn't think he was in with a chance, but he's still going to make it stick and he's still going to make the overtake. Yep. Um, and and that, that last lap, it been like you say you have no idea how you got over the bar yeah. and how you cleared 187. I have no idea how and why I came up with what I said on that last lap. And I've listened back it's to word it. vomit <laughs> just came out <laughs> like oh. It. But it's just everything you've you've learned yeah. in your career so far has led up to this Yeah, it's molded you to where yeah, but where you're gonna hopefully come up with the right words. Yeah. And I remember Ross Brawl. Who uh, uh, old Sarari, um, uh, technical director, and then their uh, obviously Braun team principal, and, and, and work with their former the legends of the sport, said to me that he was standing up in his living room shouting at his television. I was I was shouting at my iPad. I was lying Excellent. in bed because it was like two a.m. Yeah. Australia or something. So you're watching so. on KO. Yeah, yeah, watching on KO. And, and, you're, and, and that's the beauty of KO. That yeah, you can take it anywhere you want. Exactly. For Australian viewers, at least you can take it into the bedroom. Right? Yeah. Not have to wake the whole house up. Exactly. Um, My poor family. <laughs> so, so, so Ross is shouting at Teddy. Well, why are you shouting at Teddy? You don't shout at anyone. He said, yeah, you got me so excited. Yeah, wow. The situation got me so excited. I couldn't stop myself. And I'm thinking, well, okay, that's that's what I want. I yeah. want people to be passionate about the sport that I love. I want them to, to be in that moment with me and yeah. Martin. Yeah. You know, and, and enjoying it in, in whatever way they can. And... What came out of my mouth came out of my mouth. Yeah. I have no idea where it came from. I, and I certainly didn't script any lines because you can't. Mm -hmm. You can't script. You can't predict sort. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was only as we kind of turned the mics off and handed back to Simon, we're like, what wait a second. Just happened there. That was we'll a second to process everything. Yeah. Well, we've got yeah, wow. Christian Water telling us that Red Bull need a miracle to the miracle. Yeah. To the rules not being followed. To. You know, Toto screaming down the Soto screaming down the, the, oh. the, the, the team radio. 
you know, Rule's not been trying to, in a very honest mistake. Yeah. Uh, I know Michael Massey. I, I, I'm, I've known Michael Massey for many, many years. There was no conspiracy. Yeah. It was an honest mistake there. And I know that's not very palatable to some fans, mm. but that's the truth. Yeah. Um, but to be in that situation, that's, that's the honor. That's the privilege. And that's the trust that Sky Sports have in me yes, to deliver, exactly. you know, the, the, the lines at the right moment. And we want a BAFTA for it. So that's yeah, 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 very true. Yeah, yeah. And, and I do have a BAFTA trophy stacked <laughs> um, next to my television at home. Really heavy. Bro. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Really? I took a That's surprising. I had to go, I had to go yeah. to BAFTA and pick it up. Yeah. I'd take a rucksack with me because like, I carry a bag. Just like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but it was... Um, it was, yeah, it's amazing that you get recognized for, yeah. for, for that moment and, and the whole team get recognized. Mm. Like, I even remember in that moment, like your voice hyping everyone up. I was like, oh my <laughs> God, what's going to happen? <laughs> but it was kind of so because we had the safety car and then we we're about to get going. Yeah. I know. So we've now got three and a half miles, right? Or whatever the lap distance is at uh, Abu Dhabi, it's about that, where it is all or nothing for Lewis. Mm -hmm. or, you know, there, there is, there's no. There's no coming out yep. of this second and thinking, yes, I've done it right. Yeah. It's all or nothing. Yeah, it's and it's and it's right. My job to go, right, okay, focus people. This is it. Yeah. And hopefully that's what I did. Yeah, I think they Interestingly, did. Mm -hmm. we sit here before the Singapore Grand Prix. Yeah. There's 59 points between Lando Norris yeah. and Max Verstappen. Lando's second, Max is leading. If Lando wins every race, right? Yeah. And Max finishes second. Is it second? Yeah, and Ma Max finishes second. Okay. Between now and Abu Dhabi. Yep. And Lando gets the bonus point for the fastest lap. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the sprint races and Lando wins those and Max finishes second. Yep. If Lando's got that fastest lap, yeah, and he's leading, and Max is second in Abu Dhabi, they will be level on points. Yeah, oh, they'll be level. They will be absolutely dead level wow. on points. I mean, what's the chances of that? I'm sure well, you put a bet what, on. What's the chances of 2021? You know? Yeah, that's true. Anything can happen. That's the thing I love about sport, how unpredictable it is. You never know what's going to happen. Well, this is, it, and this is, this is live sport, which is why, yeah. you know, and I know it sounds like a dreadful plug, but it's true. KO mm. is so important, you know, for Australian Formula One fans and fans in Australia of any sport, because you never know when the exciting moments are going to come. Yeah. Therefore, you've got the ability to join in and be a part of it wherever you are. Yeah. You know? um, I flew back from America on uh, on Sunday. I would have missed the start of the race um, in the UK had I not got my Sky Go. Yeah. I was in the back of a, a taxi watching. Like, let me. I just watch it. To watch everything. Yeah. yeah. Shouting and screaming at my driver going, what's not that? So I saw it. Start the F1 in. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Should you be there? Yeah, I know, but I had that race off. Um, so... So imagine the scene, right? So they're level on points, but fastest lap. Mm -hmm. So Max Max could hit to try and get the fastest lap yeah. off Lando, which means that McLaren would probably have Oscar pitting to try and get yeah. the fastest lap yeah. point off Max. And then Kevin Magnussen will pit just to, you know, get the fastest lap yeah. because it's his last race. Uh, okay, you know, and he's entitled to do that. That's not a criticism of Kevin. I just plucked his name out of thin air. <laughs> but, you know, these scenarios, you've got to think about. Yeah. Because in... 2021, I was certain it was going to go down to the last race. It's yeah. Just the way that thing was done. Yeah. But, yeah. Gosh, could be the exact same thing. Remember you imagine it. Max and Lando. Exactly. Remember you heard it here first. Yes, last exactly. Lap. Heard it here first. It's back to the last lap. <laughs> Speaking of McLaren and the driver yeah. dynamic, what do you think McLaren should be doing? <laughs> There's a double-edged sword. That question. <laughs> That's right. Catch me out. McLaren should be doing whatever they feel is right yep. for the team. Yeah. Not just at this moment in time, but, but for the future going forward mm -hmm. as well. Because the decisions you make now will affect your future. Yeah. And what McLaren are desperately trying to do is ensure that there is parity and both drivers feel that they are treated equally. Yeah. Um, and whilst Lando might get paid more than Oscar because he's been in the sport a little bit longer, like long now. they're saying... Yet in the championship, Lando's leading Oscars you know, uh, uh, behind him, but we're not on number one, number two. Drive. Yeah, we're not yeah. on Red Bull. Yeah, that's not that. We're not a Max Sergio thing. Yeah. because if you tell Oscar Piastri he is a number two driver, he'll he's not going to like it. Yeah, go to another team. It's not this. Going to go to another team, but you're gonna you're gonna demotivate him. Yeah, by saying that. Yeah, if you say to Oscar, there are times we want you to help your teammate. 
but we'll make that call when it happens. Yeah. That's more acceptable. And then times where he'll be put and, and the running Lando, spot. Well, look at Lando holding up Sergio in, in, in back end. Yes. You know, yep. and, and he did that because they needed him to just keep Sergio yep. back so Oscar could pit and stay ahead. So they're, they're making decisions on the fly. Now, I did think in Monza, I, and I stated this on, on Sky Sports News, that was when team orders needed to come in for that race. Yes, yeah. Yes. Thereby, I, I agree. Max was far enough behind for Lando to, who had an excellent chance of winning, mm -hmm. to put a big gap between himself and Max in terms of on the track. Yeah. And then yeah. make up a significant number of points. Oscar doing what he did turned a probable one two into a two three. Yeah. And there's more points missed out. Yeah. And there's Lando thinking, hey, come on a minute. I'm not expecting to be doing that into the second chicane. That's, I don't like Yeah. That. Now, whether Oscar went against papaya rules or not, I don't know. Uh, only McLaren know that. But I don't, I would imagine that Andreas Seller was not hugely happy yeah. with what he saw. But this, the, but it's a barrier. The, the trouble with F1, it is a team sport, but we all concentrate on the drive. It's very individual as well. Yeah, it's and the hard. Drive. It's tricky. So I just want to beat each other. Yeah. But they need to work together sometimes for the good of the team. Yeah. And the prize money gets paid out on the team's championship. Yeah. Not on the driver's championship. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of selfish. It's, it's being selfish, but also having to be a team player yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you think ego kind of gets in the way? Of course, ego yeah. gets in the way of everything, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. It, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, true. That's, just yeah. Not, that's not unique to Formula 1. Yeah. But are they playing it right? I think they dropped a few points that they didn't need to drop. Yeah. Hungary, I think it was right to give Oscar um, uh, the win because he was on a strategy that wasn't a preferential strategy. Lando was uh, on that. The team had put him on that. But Lando deserved to win that. Uh, sorry, uh, Oscar deserved yes, to win yes. that race. Um, and that was too early in the championship to start imposing team orders. But I think now... Now it's not. Now time is running out. Yeah. They don't There's only seven races left. Seven? Yeah. So imagine the scenario yeah. here in Singapore. Oscar's winning, Lando's second, Max's fifth. Yep. Yeah? And that's seven points. Sorry, that's five points. I can't. I'll get my maths right. Eight points, because it's 18 know. for second, uh, between <laughs> Lando and Max. Yeah. But you swap them around at the front, and that's now 15 points. Yeah. And that is a 52-point lead going into Austin or it's a 44-point lead going into Austin. That's mm -hmm. a big difference. Yeah. So you've got to think, yeah, Oscar would want the win. It's not going to go to, it's not going to be hugely palatable yeah. to say swap it round. But for the good of the championship, for Lando, yes, it is. But then I was speaking to Oscar Piastri yesterday and I said, uh, I said, do you still think you're in with a chance of winning the Drivers' Championship? Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe. And yeah. he's not mathematically out of it. So then, yeah. yes, of course, he has got a chance. So what do you do? I mean, the way he's driving, you never know. Yeah, look, Oscar's, Oscar's a brilliant driver. And I think yeah. he will be a world champion one day. Because yeah. I think he's, he is more than good enough and, and, is, and, and handles the pressure so well. But it's, So it's not an easy answer, yeah. which is why McLaren haven't come out and said, we've got a number one, we've got a number two. And why people it's say this really? is Senna and Prost all over yeah. again. It's you know, not. They don't hate each other uh, or they don't dislike each other. They're not going to ram each uh, other off the road. Yeah. But they are of an ability to be both considered as a number one driver. Mm -hmm. They're both amazing. Yeah. They're great. I actually, I went to an event yesterday and Lando was there. Yeah. He was saying how much he loved Singapore. Yeah. But how hard it is for them. Oh, like mentally and physically, the sweat, the the humidity. I can't imagine how hot it is inside those suits. Well, it's, oh my gosh. You, you you are you are having to constantly hydrate, but yet still you're losing three kilos. Yeah. You know, as as a racing driver. Uh it's if you imagine exercising in a sauna, yeah, uh, steam room. Steam room, sauna, steam steam room, room yeah. Just the humidity. You try and run on the spot. At home, sort of run on the spot and in a steam, steam room, and then tell me Formula One's not a proper sport, you know? Yeah, um, it's uh, it's a ridiculous notion. Let's not forget about the the oh, neck. Yeah, well, the next, so the next <laughs> next not too bad because you have many high okay. speed, they haven't got many high speed corners. Yeah, it's it's mental attrition. Yeah, there. you 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 will often see mistakes in the latter stage 
you know what it's like as a, as a former professional athlete. Yeah. Um, it's that ability to to cope with the physicality but still make the right decisions mm -hmm. um, while you're doing it. I spoke to Nico Rosberg about this once. Mm -hmm. um, we're having a chat in the office because uh, I I was um, I'd just been doing my walking uphill for an hour. Yeah. Just when you get to my age, you know, you can't run in the time, does the joints it. You go on your hot girl walks. And on my walk. On my walk. We call them hot girl walks in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I've got my own. Yeah. No, I don't. No, we don't <laughs> have little hand weights. Just hot girl walks. Just some nice walks. Now, what I do, I go on the treadmill at home and I put it on an ink line, mm -hmm. 10%, and I walk for an hour at six kilometers an hour. Yeah, that gets the That's pretty solid. That's, that's very solid. And I do that because I could also watch TV while yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. Whereas if you're running, in fact, the TV is doing that. You yeah. can't do it. And Nico said, well, yeah, I used to do that. He said, but I did. 12%, uh, you know, six and a half K. Yeah, of course yeah. you did. Nico, you're a professional. Said, and I used to play poker. I said, did you? He said, I play seven hands of poker. While he's while on the treadmill. That. I'm like, well, have you got a gambling problem? Choose some help. <laughs> exactly. I've got, I've got a number of a person there. And he went, no, no, no. I did that so that I could keep my brain, you know, functioning yeah. and make the right mental decisions whilst oh. I was exercising. It's really it's very interesting, yeah. See, you shouldn't have taken up F1 on my job. I know. Yeah, you just ran. Lips. I oh, know. It was pretty boring. It fell. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes I roll the bars down as well. Oh, that was always fun. That was always very fun. I was going to say, what is your favorite part about Singapore? What's favorite that? aspects oh. um, of Singapore, the city, and then also Singapore, the race. Right. So, Singapore, the race, easy. It's a night race. Yeah. Like being a student again. And I didn't go to university, but I, yeah, I did. I did study at some yep. stage of my life. I face other than when you come and say, Crofty, could we meet at 10 a.m.? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, Very sorry. I'm in bed till midday. Lovely. Yeah. I mean, the fact that I've been to, I, I go to sleep about 3 a.m. is like, mm -hmm. I sleep till midday, it's like being a student again. Yeah. Love it. And also the cars. You don't feel guilty. I do not yeah. feel guilty at all. Cars look amazing. Under the lights, you'll notice this when you see them on the track. Yeah. They take on a whole new uh, look. Um, I love that we've created, we've created a history now of Formula One in Singapore, and you you walk around the town. It's a very young fan base, yeah, because you know they've grown up through yeah you know, the last fourteen years watching Formula One. They're really passionate about it, and that's great. You know, we're we're, we're taking F one to new places all the time, and staying there, and and the fan base keep come coming mm. back and coming back, and that's the future. You know. Um, we don't want to abandon our roots and then we want to keep the classic tracks, but you've got to have, you know, something new and exciting. Good, yeah. And a, and a good mixture too. So, so I, I love the spectacle of the night race. I love that we've created an audience and on behalf of the Singapore tourist board, ladies and gentlemen, I also love Singapore chili crab. If you ever come to this part of the world, chili crab, you yeah. have to eat the chili crab. It's messy. Yeah. It's really it? messy, but it's going to give you a bit, but it's fantastic. Yeah. Does it have a little crab on it? It has a little crab on it. Yes. So get yourself to uh, where they go last year. Jumbo, Jumbo Seafood. Jumbo Seafood. Uh, okay. I'll have to go to. It was just mega. They came up bread to dip in the sauce. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's, I don't know. That's delicious. I'll have to go there before we go to the track. Yes. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Uh, today, yeah. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Tomorrow. Thursday, Friday. Thursday. Yeah. I'd go, to, I'd go today. Yesterday, yeah. Or how long are you staying to? Till Tuesday. Right. Okay. Monday night, Jumbo Seafood. Oh. I would have flown back home by that stage, I'm afraid. It's a bit sad. Otherwise, you could uh, take me with some jumbo crab, yeah. uh, for some chili crab. But go and have that. That's mega. Um, go down to some of the older parts of town, of the architecture. Yeah, just, I really want to explore more yeah, the city as well. Club Street's really good for cocktails as well. Oh, love that. Got to have a Singapore sling. Coffee. Do you like coffee? I do not like coffee. Tea. Do you like tea? See, I'm so coffee. not British. Yeah. Don't like it. There you go. It's a bit weird, isn't it? No tea or coffee. It's tea bags. Tea bags give me the ick. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> they give me the ick. I don't like the like the soft material ones. You can get some nice ones that feel really expensive and then are nice. Okay. Okay. You can't because there's still a bag <laughs> with tea leaves in it that gets soggy and it gives me the ick. Oh, I mean, that's fair. This is how much. Interesting. This is how I knew that I, I love my wife. Well, the lady who is now my wife, so we, we got married. Really she doesn't like tea either. No, she loves tea. Oh. And I used to make her a cup of tea in the morning. And I would do it willingly. It's like, how much do I love you? Look, yeah. cup of tea. This thing's giving me the ick. You, you put aside your ick and make the tea. That's what you got to do, boys. You do. You do. I actually saw 
You were ma- got married a few weeks ago. That's right. The race weekend. Did you have some sneaky? Did you switch off completely, or no, did you? Wasn't, no, it wasn't. It wasn't race weekend. Race weekend? Uh, we honeymooned on race weekend. Honeymoon on race um, weekend. Which did you have to like sneak off and just quickly watch some races, or did you just completely uh, switch off? I completely switched off. Oh, that's uh, nice. Which was really nice. Yeah. Try to avoid all F1 references during the wedding as well. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I got wins. That there was a sweep stage on my speech as to how many times I'd mentioned lights out and away we go. Oh. Damon Hill let the cat out of the bag on that one. And so I, I rewrote the speech so that, uh, <laughs> so that I had two mentions of it. Yeah. Because I think he had two in the sweep stage. Mm-hmm. You know, stick together with a chap. You can't go far wrong with that one. <laughs> and um, we did the final toast was, mm-hmm. you know, lights out and away oh. we go to oh. Croft marriage. <laughs> Gotta do it. Uh, had to be done. You can't not. No, exactly. You can't not do it. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, it was um, it was it was mega. It was a, a great celebration with was, was all our family mm-hmm. friends. And um one of the Sky Sports team mm-hmm. might have fallen asleep in the bush. That is the revelation from the cross. Oh. Wedding. But I'm not saying no. Who is it? So they're staying at this hotel. Oh, they, yes, they are staying at this hotel. I can't tell you. I'm going to go back. Gonna I'm going to go. I'm going to go on Instagram and do some stalking, like tagged photos, <laughs> find who works at Sky, who's who fell in a bush. I'm sure there's a fo- surely there's a photo somewhere. Who fell asleep in the bush? That's no one is ever going to say. I mean, fair enough. But it happens. Fair enough. At a wedding, absolutely. That always happens. Exactly. I've had similar encounters. Have you fallen asleep <laughs> in the bush at a wedding? Since it- almost. <laughs> Oh, it's fallen into bushes. Really? And what we are falling is one thing. Sleeping yeah, sleeping is another. another. That wouldn't be very comfortable. I, I would imagine so. No. Gosh. Oh, there. There's your there's yeah. bomb jelly exclusive. I'm going to keep that one. Keep that one to myself. <laughs> <laughs> going into Singapore, how does it compare to Australia, to the Melbourne circuit? It's, it's a completely different, um, it's a completely different vibe and atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and neither are, you know, worse for it. But the thing about Albert Park, that's one of the reasons that I, I'm parking Silverstone, I, I put very much on a park. Mm-hmm. It's a festival. Yeah. It's not just a Grand Prix. It's a festival of, of motorsport. Yeah. The noise, the buzz, the passion, the nonstop action, you know, the, the, the multitude of things to do. Um, the sunshine. Yeah, we do get sunshine in Silverstone occasionally. Sometimes. Yeah, and we have the best stripes. It was raining all of this year, wasn't it? This year was. Yeah. And that disappointed me because we have the best stripes on the grass yeah. by the side of a racetrack. I know. Of any track anywhere in the world. There's still still stripes. Yeah. Honestly, as a man who likes stripes and his lawn at home, these things are good. Um, but they're very much on the mark. I, I, I love being in Albert Park. Mm. It is a great, great race. To host yeah. um, a Grand Prix. Now, I'm not saying it's the best track. It's mm-hmm. better for the current, you know, regulations. The, the, the regulations with DRS, but also the, the work they've done to try and make it a bit better yep. as well. Um, they could. There, there are more things they could do, but you're in a park and you've got to work with the yeah. people that want to use it for the other 51 weeks of the year. But the fact that we have the Aussie V8s down there. Oh, the V8s. the V8s are fun, aren't they? I love the V8s. Why do they sound? I'm actually. Like I'm going to the V8s. To the Adelaide 500 in November. Oh, it sounds bad. Do you get to go in? Are they going to give you a passenger ride? I think so. Oh, yes. I hope so. we have done the passenger ride. You have? Yeah. Fun? It was fun until I had to get out. Yeah. You've been dizzy? Well, no, not so much that. I'm like, how the hell am I going to get out? No, we were, yeah. I was, I was, you was in a shell. Well, is that a big little shell? In the cage. We're in a, I was in a Mustang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, I've always dislocated my neck trying to get in. Yeah. This thing. You, you, I, honestly... You're poor. You're going to struggle <laughs> yeah. on this one. But I'm also tall and big, and I had to go out sideways. It was like undignified exit. Oh, no. Oh. And I was thinking, as we were like, bombing around Albert Park, if you crash, I'm in trouble. Then. Yeah. Never get it out. But, oh, yeah. you know, you know, I'm loving it anyway. Yeah. So um, the V8s, love the V8s. Um, in fact, we've got the F2 there now as well. It's just it's just a great festival. And where, whereas Bahrain is brilliant for a season opener, and yeah. it really is a great track. To have a season opener, we're going to get a very different season opener. I'm like, and a big celebration <laughs> in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm from Melbourne. We should have it. We anytime. like season opener in Melbourne. <laughs> I like the fact that we have different places to yeah. uh, the season. Yep. Um, and for Oscar Piastri, I am sure oh, scary. The next Melbourne. year, it's great that it's a season opener because he can get his home race and the season opener out the way in one go. Mm. 
and then concentrate, you know. All right. that pressure. Just off his shoulders. All the way off his shoulders. Yeah. On a plane to China. No. Very Wouldn't true. that be amazing? Hometown boy winning his hometown race. I would love to see it. Yeah. Love to see it. How, what, how do you think Oscar will go next year? I think Oscar will be absolutely fine. Uh, uh, Oscar is a talent. Yeah. Uh, an exceptional talent. Whoever wins out in the McLaren battle this year wins out. Yep. It'll be a reset next year. They're both number one drivers. They're both pushing each other mm. to new and, and greater heights time after time. You know what it's like. You need a rival. Yeah. You know, you need someone there to push you. And, exactly. Yeah. I'm sure you have that motivation in your competition yeah. as well. And they've very much got that at McLaren. So as long as the car's good, Oscar will be. Yeah. Oh, unlike the Red Bull, that's not. Well, it's so great. They I mean, lost their way a bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask, Daniel Ricciardo, yeah. what do you think is going to happen? You read a lot of stories. Yeah. You know. There's been a few the last few days as well. It turned out to be stories and nothing yeah. else. Um, but I think and the situation is quite clear. Yeah. Either Daniel moves up into the main scene, mm -hmm. or Daniel doesn't drive an F1 before yeah. Red Bull is all the car next year. Yeah. I would be very, very sad to see Daniel Ricciardo make his exit from F1 again. I think everyone will. He is, he's not just a, a terrific human being. Mm. Um, make no mistake, he is a terrific human being. But he's also a fabulous driver. He's yeah. given us some amazing, some amazing moments. And when Oscar made his move on Charles in Baku, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and that brilliant overtake to take the lead. Maybe the biggest compliment you can pay to Danny Ricardo at that moment is how just like Danny Rick. Yeah. When Danny Rick was on top of his game, mm -hmm. just like Danny Rick. Oh, yeah. You know, the last of the late breakers. And he gave us some brilliant moments like that. Personally, I, I don't think he should ever have left Red Bull in the first place. I agree with you there. I think that yeah. was a wrong move, and he'll probably admit that himself. Yeah. Uh, the fact that he's come back is great. But he has not consistently beaten over the course of this year a guy in Yuki Tsunoda who the rebel hierarchy don't see as being good enough to go into the senior mm. team. And because of that, it's difficult to justify why Danny Rick should be yeah. replacing Sergio Perez. And I think that's their that's their way of thinking on this one. Yeah. Will Sergio stay at Rebel? Don't know. Yeah. I'm not surprised that he stayed there in the summer. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he stayed there again. But there maybe are other options that they could explore yep. that would give them a better return. And that might open the way. If, if Liam Lawson went into the Red Bull team, it might open the way for Danny Rick to stay. But RB is, is a junior team yes. to bring young Red Bull yeah. drivers yeah. through. It's a lot. So that's a very long-winded way of saying I don't know what's going yeah. to happen. But if you were to tell me to get off the fence, I would say, sadly, <laughs> buff. I don't think we'll be having a Danny Rick conversation yeah. this time next year about how's he going to get on at the Singapore Grand yeah. Prix. And I hate saying that yeah, because I don't want Danny Rick to stop. Yeah, neither do I. No. I don't think anyone does. And it's rare that, that someone from Melbourne would be rooting for someone from Perth, you know, because it's like opposite sides of the country. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that's, the opposite side of the world. And that's how gorgeous <laughs> Danny Rick is. Yeah, well, Even people in Melbourne love Danny Rick. Oh, everyone loves people Danny people Rick. Melbourne. Everyone loves him. Danny Rick... Um, I remember doing a feature with him many, many years ago at the Download Festival. Yeah. Where we went to see uh, we went to see Parkway Drive together because we both oh. love Parkway Drive. Okay, fun. Uh, it was far. You may have gone into a mosh pit. <laughs> How are you in a mosh pit? I'm a great at mosh pit, trust me. I, I, you have I, a great time. I get my elbows <laughs> after mosh pit. I love mosh pit. Mm, they're fun. I do. Um, and, I, and I love my metal as well. And we just had it. We had a brilliant yeah. download. It was sensational. That's nice. Uh, we, we went backstage. We met Winston and the boys and, uh, and had a good chat. And then and this was partway drive, way, way back. Uh, what, and they just released Wild Eyes. Uh, wait, it was still one of their best at Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we're there. We're getting to the wash there. And I'm like, Nicola, you're racing next week. You know, you're in the middle of a Formula yeah, One city. That's amazing. The Ross of the time. And we're in a mosh pit. This is in the mosh pit having a great time. We so need to keep this from Fran's toss to not say anything. And I'm shook. There's Social media ban. I, I reckon there's got to be GoPro footage somewhere unless we've deleted it. Mm -hmm. Me and Danny Rick in a mosh pit. But it was, uh, I was a big You have to find that. Yeah. Pull it back up I somehow. I think I remember the day because uh, we were talking in the van going up to, to down the hood and uh, 
I said, how, how are you liking Woven Sands, which is where he was living at the time. I lived quite close by. Mm -hmm. He said, well, it's okay. I'm not going to be there for long. I went, oh, no, really? Is that right? He said, yeah, I'm going to be moving. I said, oh, where are you moving to? So I'm moving to Monaco. I went, oh, oh. Uh, promotion. At which point he went quiet. I went, you've got a promotion, haven't you? He went, like, I can read it all over your face. It's such hard to say. I went, right. Right. You're going to have to say. Yeah. You're going to have to trust You can't me. not tell me. Well, we did, a, we did a couple of questions about him. You know, are you ready to drive for Rem? Yeah. You know, to replace Mark Webber. Yeah. And he gave me two very, very good answers without saying, uh, yes, I'm definitely going to be yeah. driving for, uh, for for Red Bull. And I said, look, we, we're going to use this feature for Silverstone. Mm -hmm. If Mark hasn't announced it by that stage, we won't put these questions. Yeah. Trust me, mate. I'm, I'm not going to blow. You're not going to. I'm not going to blow the story. Do it What's the point? Yeah, exactly. You know, all I'm going to do is upset Danny. With upset and you'll lose that Red trust Bull. as well. You'll lose that trust. Yeah. Um, and we kept our words. And on the Thursday, I think it was a Silverstone, Mark Webber announced his retirement. And we're like, brilliant. We've got it in the can. Ready to go. Yeah, it's, we're doing it. The, it's happening. It's feature, happening. What do you do on your day off as a racing driver? You go to a racetrack and you get in a mosh pit. Yeah. It was kind of born on that. Got to do it. And I'm still loving Parkway Drive to this day. And they're still, still, they are still the oh, best bunch of guys. And there you go. So, um, I took my son to see them at Download last year. And we went backstage yeah. and met them. They're just still, they're a great band. Love I'll have Parkway to go see Drive. them. Have you never seen Parkway Drive Live? No, I haven't. I'll have to go. They're intense, but they make it test. Yeah, I think probably in a few drinks before. I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> do, it, do it so it's, it's yeah. a better experience. Yeah. Aspect. Feel everything. Feel the music. Just got to understand a dot of what we're saying or know who Parkway Drive are. Go listen. Go listen. listen. Give your Pause ears. this. Yeah, keep it in the street. I was going to say as well, if you could convince a casual F1 fan to become a hardcore fan, <laughs> how would you convince them? Oh, my Lord. Um, but I, I, I think F1 is like an onion, right? And, oh. and you, when you peel back the layers... Shrek oh, reference? Yeah, you see, you weren't expecting that one. When you peel back the layers, it makes you cry, right? Yeah. Cause it's it does. It makes you cry. and Because it, it's hard sometimes to understand what on earth is going yeah, on. It is it a is. It really is. Ball. Someone asked me the other day, why do you like darts and F1? I said, there's all aerodynamics. <laughs> I was about to say they're very different, but and you're not they wrong. Are. I said, but also I need an antidote. Yeah. yeah. F1 aerodynamics. makes me think a lot. Darts is just, you know, good, bad, good, bad on every throw. Mm -hmm. and yeah, but you peel back the layers. It makes you cry. And eventually you find the juiciest, sweetest spot wherever that is on the onion, and it's worth getting that mm -hmm. far because the taste is amazing. So that's my kind of reference it. I would never convince anyone. No, say that again. I would never try and convince anyone to be a hardcore Formula One fan. Yep. Find the bit that's your sweet spot. Yep. Find the bit that's the level you want to enjoy the sport at. Mm. Yes, you can sit there, you know, with, with with your KO on, your timing screen on, you know, and your driver tracker on, and and all that data is all there for you. And yes, it enhances your viewing experience. Mm. Or you could just watch it on KO and yeah. to our commentary, because whatever way makes you happy and excited, and gives you a pleasure from watching some of the greatest drivers on the planet. Yeah go wheel to wheel over 200 miles an hour, that's good. And if that sounds really dull to you, I don't know why you put up with the first 50 minutes of this conversation. Yes. Because it's not dull. Formula One is, is such an exciting mm -hmm. sport. There are so many different subplots. There are so many reasons why things go good, they go wrong or go right. You just got to find your level. Whatever level that is, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, even on social media, being a woman that loves F1, you know, you have men coming into the comments saying, well, who won the Monaco Grand Prix in 1934? Who cares? That doesn't matter. I love the sport. Exactly. I love being immersed in it. And just because I don't know who has won every Grand Prix for the last 20 years, it's, it doesn't matter. It's like a badge of honor in life, isn't it? You know, there, there are certain sections of a population that think you have to know everything about yep. everything to be a true fan. No. Oh. You, if you devote time, effort, money, and passion into anything, mm -hmm. then you deserve your place yeah. in, in, in the fabric. 
You don't have to know everything about everything. Yeah. If you want to know that, that's brilliant. Good on you. And that's your level of consuming yeah. the sport we love. The beautiful thing, I think, about Drive to Survive, it's brought in a new era of sound. Yeah, definitely who, has. Who wants to consume it at, 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 at a, a very different level yeah. to the way you've had to consume it in the past. And what I mean by that is that we've all, in the past, Formula One has served up the live sports and has said, yeah, stick around for the soap opera because the soap opera is yeah. quite cool. It's a bit juicy. Exactly. <laughs> and now, Drive to Survive, juicy is poor work. Um, <laughs> Drive to Survive has served up the soap opera mm -hmm. and people want to stick around for the live yeah. sport. So we flipped it around a little bit. It's nice when you can see both narratives as well. Totally agree. You marry it together and you get the whole picture. How much of your time do you spend on full low odd during the course of the week? Are you one of these, you check Twitter to see the link? Yeah, Twitter, apps, yeah. everything, Instagram, TikTok. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. Last question. We have been chatting for a very long time. How are you? <laughs> Any predictions? This weekend. So, like anyone this listens weekend. to my predictions. Look, the only no, they do. Yeah, well, they do. They They're do. often wrong. But the, the only prediction I'm giving this weekend is that there's a lot of people in the fight. Yep. Probably not Red Bull. So, yeah. to, to be fair, uh, for the win, that is. Mercedes potentially, but I'm not, oh. I'm not sure. Um, although both Lewis and George are capable of pulling a lap out the back. We, um, qualifying. we have a joke in Australia. You know Stephen Bradbury? Stephen Bradbury. Yeah. No. So from the Winter Olympics, uh, he was okay. coming, what spot was it? Skating. And he was coming last. And then everyone in front of him fell. Yeah. And he went through and won it. Okay. And so there's a joke that George Russell is a Stephen Bradbury. Because <laughs> <laughs> he always seems to be right time, right Absolutely. position to, you know, gain an advantage off someone else's <laughs> fall. It's a tear last year, where you correct? Yeah. He was that <laughs> Uh, that one too. That was last. It was so last year yeah. with George. Yeah, it's like the Foy Neighbour. Uh, uh, Foy Neighbour was a horse at the Grand National. It, it, all the horses f uh, fell at the Canal Turn, I think it was. Yeah. And then Foy Neighbour jumped it. It was like 100 to 1 shot. Yeah. And then went and won the race because no, everyone was in fall. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I like the Stephen Bradbury reference. Um, it's a good one. But I do think both Lewis and George are capable of a lap, you know, to, to pull out the back. Realistically, it's Ferrari against McLaren yeah. for the win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and both go into this with a massive sense of expectation that they could go and do this. Overtaking is tricky, not impossible. It's a fourth DRS zone. We don't. Oh, have that's that. right. Yeah. Which Where have they put that? They put that on the run from the end of the Esplanade to uh, the right hand. It's turn 14 to 16. Yeah. Where we used to go, now we're going straight, but we used to go in front of the grandstand where uh, oh, some people get to the Yes. Uh, it is prank. Yeah all those years ago. Um, that might help keep the cars a bit closer together, might give us a bit more overtaking, might mean that if Oscar's in the lead again, he's got Charles um, yeah. down his neck. Yeah. I I think I think a McLaren 1-2 is not yeah. of the equation here. Which way it goes, I don't, you don't know. I'm hoping for Oscar. Well, in which case, then, I'll root for Lando. Okay. Just to say the opposite side. Debrief at the yeah. end of the race. And I know we are, we are talking oh, a lot of Australians here, but I've got off the brief now, haven't I? All I do know is, is A, it's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. B, it's a great time for Australian audiences. You yeah. can go to work on a Monday morning without bags under your eyes. It's a 10 p.m. race for us. Oh. 10 p.m. Middle of the afternoon. Right. Fantastic. Um, you can take your KO with you under the duvet. And watch the race, yeah? That's what I do. There you go. <laughs> F1 Under the Duvet. It's a new podcast coming your way. Go to see I like yeah. that. <laughs> there we go. I have to get that one. Love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy.